hi guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome uh today's project is a uh, um, an irish celtic knot scarf and the inspiration for this project comes from pinterest i will share an image of what inspired this the techniques techniques that we will use will be um mattress stitch to join the tubes and then a single crochet stitch to finish it off so let's start okay so in order to cast on grab your waist yarn loop it around the needle that has a different color from the rest we will define that as our first needle loop it around and then start alternating pegs where the waist yarn will go on the back of the second peg on the front of the third and so on back and forth front and back until you uh go all the way around and back to the very first needle that you start off once you got there you will feed your waist yarn through the yarn feeder and pin it to your um, tension guide i'm using the smallest tension so the, the tightest one and you start cranking how many rows do you crank a waist yarn that's up to you uh the more the merrier but as a rule of thumb, I would advise you to go from five rows upwards, not any less, because then it just becomes uh, cheekier to work with. I will also show you a wee trick um, that I don't normally use, but more so because I keep forgetting about it, but it's very handy. And that is to, once I crank the waist yarn, I will add um one row of a third color yarn like almost like a, a lifeline yarn uh you will see it in a second and that will uh, facilitate the taking off of the waist yarn uh once we finish with the project so keep cranking. I don't even know how many rows I cranked here because I already have my own separate balls dedicated for waste yarn. So I tend to just use the ball. Um, and these balls, I just collect them because maybe they're scrap from other projects. And maybe that is just what was left from the ball of yarn that I used. So I have a nice handy wee basket where I take and keep them all. So this is me finishing my uh, waist yarn and I'm now adding a different color that is not my working yarn yet. I will be adding this pink thread, a pink yarn for one row. And you will see later on why I'm doing this. But basically, once you're finished everything, if you pull on this pink yarn, the waist yarn will come off in one piece without having to unravel it. Just make sure that you do one row, but you finish um, on the last peg that doesn't have, so the, that doesn't have the pink yarn coming out of it. So I started on the black peg and finishing on the white. So it's like leaving the circle open. And now I am starting the actual uh, work with my working yarn. So I'm using a DK yarn. Um, I got it out of Home Bargains in the UK. So nothing special. Uh, but it works pretty well. Again, tight tension. And here I'm just demonstrating you the cast on and cast off. But at this point, you will need to crank 300 rows. Once you're finished with the 300 rows, then you will need to add the bright pink. If you want, if you wanted to use this tip that I'm showing you, you need to you need to add the bright pink yarn and then the waist yarn. Otherwise, you can go directly in with the waist yarn. It's your choice. But if you can remember to do this trick, it just makes things easier. 
I just keep forgetting normally so I just took the chance now that I'm showing you guys how to do this thing to actually show you this trip so here's the bright pink yarn coming in you do one round Okay, now here I got a little bit um, <laughs> messed up because I didn't want to cut my working yarn just because this was a sample, but then I end up tangling myself with it, so eventually I did cut it off. But obviously once you crank your 300 rows of yarn, of working yarn, you cut your yarn and you start either with the uh i don't even know how you want to call this thread here this this technique but either you add this one row of different color yarn that it will be a, a pull off for the waist yarn or you go in directly with the waist yarn Now, once again, with the cast off, uh, I would advise you to do at least five rows. And even at that, the five rows are the bare minimum that you can work with. Um, the more, the merrier. Just because the cast off part will be done with live stitches. So it could unravel. You can secure the stitches on the cast off by doing an extra row of picking up the stitches like you would do with a hat up to you i tend not to just an extra step that i avoid unless i know i need to manipulate the project a lot so if i don't need to do that i'll just crank the waist yard until as you as you can see it fall off falls off from the from the machine Okay, so this is my sample. In your case, you would have waist yarn, 300 rows of main project, and then again, waist yarn as a cast on, cast off. Um, if you followed uh, th this tip here, then I'll show you, you will see now um, the benefits of it. First of all, once you have your um, tube finished, tug it, pull it, stretch it a little bit and then leave it um, just a couple of seconds so that the yarn relaxes back to the actual um, right shape. And this is the moment where you need to make sure that your tube is straight. Obviously, whenever you have a very small sample like this, it's easy. Whenever you have a longer tube, not so much. I don't know if you can actually see it, but let me see if I can. Okay. So you see here this row for this is just an example where my index finger is i'm following it so from here that i was below the edge if i follow it i will end up on the edge this is telling me that this um tube is twisted so that will be a little bit of a challenge once we get to uh, sew this together with the rest of the project. My advice when you are um, working with long tubes is that once you finish them, once it's off the machine, I would wait before closing the ends. So in, in order to 
manipulate the tube and make sure that if you're um, stitching this together to other tubes, you're sure that you're following a straight line and then you can close it flat, no bother. But the fact that I close mine flat first, this will end up doing something like so. So I will bubble up a little bit on the edge. Um, so yeah, do what I say, don't do what I do kind of scenario, but I'm a, a very impatient crafter. So I like to get all the bits and pieces done <laughs> before I do the main part. But um, yeah, out of experience, note to myself, when you work with long tubes and many that you need to then um, add together, probably the best option would be to not close the ends right away but do that at the very last seeing as i have my work done already i will not be able to show you um on the actual project but i will show you here how to close flat the the tube so you can refer back to it and then I'll show you what this what this does. So obviously you need to find the middle and you need to find it in a way that doesn't twist the, the tube. Most of the times I count my stitches. So in this case it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Meaning that 11 and 12 need to be stitched together. And in order to do that, you grab the loops. This is the moment that you will need the crochet hook. You grab the loops, both of them, onto the crochet hook. And you start feeding one loop inside the other. Then you're, remain, you're remaining with one loop, you grab the next stitch above and you feed it in and then the one below and you feed it through and basically what you're doing here is you're braiding the stitches together so that you can close your tube flat. Always start from the side that does not have the tail because this will help you to um, secure the closure. So I'm at the end. If I was to leave this like this, this is a live stitch and therefore it will cause to un unravel the project. Well, the project, the closure once I pull on the tail. So if I grab the tail and pull it through like this and then pull through again, that creates a knot. You pull it on and that's it that's that's your closure secured now time to remove the waste yarn so in a normal scenario where you might not have had this on what you would do is if this was the cast on 
as it is, you would start grabbing the very, very first row that is the one feeding through all the loops, pulling it through, pulling it through. So that you can get to the point where it unravels itself and you will just unravel the product, the, the, the waste yarn, like this. But if you use this, what you're gonna do is you just pull. You need to pull hard, but feel the project. So you don't want to snap anything in the process. So we pull this off. And ta -da! that's your waste yarn off. And then you can deal with this later. So same applies here. This is a cast off edge. I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to count my stitches. And obviously, you know, I mean, the um, contrasting colors will allow you to see where you are and as long as you follow the color of your working yarn you're good so you shouldn't be uh, getting confused as long as they are contrasting enough so count your stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven meaning that eleven and twelve are going together both on the crochet hook one inside another now you can Go back and grab the front one. You can go down and grab the next one. It's it six or half a dozen. It doesn't matter. As long as you alternate. Once you have the first two connected, start alternating. So if you go first on the top, then you grab the one at the bottom after that. And so on. And then you grab your working yarn, the tail of the working yarn. I have a very skimpy one here, that should be enough. And you pull this through in a loop and then you pull it through again and that creates a knot. Grab the end of the tail, put your thumb and index finger on the knot, press together and pull. So while you're pulling, you're pushing down the knot and that tied into everything. Once again, just pull it on this now if you get stuck because it can happen at the end of the day it's it's yarn it can the the fabric can still tangle together or maybe you have split the yarn like i think i did here so you can help yourself like this and then start pulling again and there you have it. So this is how you cast on cast off and with an added tip to it. 
with waist yarn and you close front so you need to do this for all six tubes remember 300 rows each and then you need to connect them together now to connect them together we can we should not be connecting the entire length of the tube for the simple reason that we need um the ends to be kept um how can i say to be kept loose because we need to braid the ends in order to make the celtic knot so you're only attaching the metal part to one another so let me show you what i've done here So these are the tubes connected, but not all the way. And the way I measure this, I literally eyeballed it, as I normally do. So what I did was I just fold in half the tube, all of them, making sure that they were all the same size. Because you might have missed a count of your rows or something like that. So always good to check. So fold it in half. Made sure that everything was the same length. And then I marked the other half. So basically it's a, it's a quarter. Because if I, I fold this once in half, if I fold it in half again, that is where the connection stop stops. <coughs> so in one side and the other. So I hope it makes sense. So you have the first quarter left uh, free. Then you have two quarters in the center connected together. And then the last quarter on the other side left free. So what we need to do now is join the, um, the last tube that I have together with the mattress stitch. With the mattress stitch, we need to make sure that we are following the same direction of stitches on both tubes. So if I want to follow this, I need to um, I need to make sure that on this side the stitches are in the same direction so I hope you can see it so again we need to grab the stitches that are going in the same direction A lot of knitters, they will tell you to follow the stitches that are pointing to the left. Um, I don't really care too much. I try to go with how the, the project sits because I don't want to twist it too much. I think we have it but in any case the important thing is that you get the ones that are following the same direction so let's start mattress stitch the way I start with the mattress stitch is I start grabbing two bars leave a little bit of a tail at the end and in order for me to In order for me to remember that I have that tail there and not yank it through, I'm going to just add a wee clip at the end so I know it's not going anywhere. Because what you will do eventually is you will pull on the yarn and this will be pulled through. So you don't want that. <coughs> I mean, you can even start with like a knot and secure it with a knot. I like to do that later. 
So you grab your two bars on one side, then you go on the other side and grab another two bars. Then you go back and you enter with your needle in the same space that you come out from. So I have this yarn coming out from here. I'll go back in, back in to the same spot and grab the next two bars and pull. I like not to pull too tight. At least at the start you have to see where i am just in case maybe i made a mistake it's easier then to go back and, and pull off the yarn just take your time So go back inside from where you came out from. And I mean, it's just, you're just inserting your needle in. You're not going too far down, just the tip. And hook it back up and automatically it will grab the two bars. Now, I am in the process of um, making a mini series of like back to basics where I will introduce the machines and, and show the basic techniques of um, cast on, cast off, the sewing stitches, how we can connect the projects together, and a little bit of an insight of flat panels. So. I will eventually refer back to those videos for a better understanding just in case uh, there is somebody completely new to the craft that would like to actually have a little bit more of a dedicated um, tutorial on how to do the stitching together or the how to's basically. So if you're interested, stay tuned. But also, if you're interested in seeing anything else or if you have any suggestions or videos that you would like to, to see, just drop a comment below. So we keep going. Another reason why I like to keep um, the stitching very loose is also because it makes it easier for me. <coughs> Sorry, it makes it easier for me to actually uh, see on what row I am, on what line I am. Because I will show you in a moment, once you type this in, it will join them together so you might get a little bit more confused on where you need to start grabbing 
um, your bars. So until I can, I will keep my stitching loose. Now you don't necessarily have to even cut the yarn, you can actually work directly out of the ball. The good thing of the mattress stitch is that you can pull it from one end to another and you will have this yarn sliding in. Meaning that if you get to the almost the end and you're running out of yarn you can just pull it and I will put all the way through and out of the ball. But as a rule of thumb, usually it's enough to calculate to the gauge one and a half to two in length of the stitching yarn that you need based on the length of the product that you need to sew together. So again, you get the gist of it. So let me show you what happens once you pull. Okay, so once you've finished uh, sewing the, um, the tubes together, you secure your ends. And just put a knot on your tails and then you can secure them and hide them away as you would do as normal Now it comes the phone part. So now we need to knot these together. Just so when I can be in frame. Okay, so what you have now is this project made of six tubes, 300 rows each, connected in the middle section in order for you to have on each side tails loose. Um, this will allow us to start crisscrossing them together in order to make the knot. Um, I'm starting from my left side and I'm counting this as tube one. Two, three, four, five, and six. So let's do this. You grab tube number one and tube number three, and you cross them together with three.
going on top of one. Then you pull through number two and you place it on top of number three. And that's your starting point for this section. Now you go to the other three and you do the same. So you grab four and six and you cross them with six going above four. But in this case, number five stays underneath. You're just moving it to the left of number four. So the way you have it now is this is number three, this is number one, this is number two, this is number five, this is number six, and this is number four. Now you grab number five and number two, and they go, they cross each other with five going above two. Keep your five and put it underneath number one. Now grab six, that it's already above four. It goes under number two and above one. Then you grab number four. It, it twists, it, it goes on a, an, on a curve, so it goes a little bit back in order to go above number two and then below number one. And this resection is done. So I start putting stitch markers so it doesn't go anywhere. On this other side, you do the same. So you get number three, it goes on a curve under number four. And above number six. And that's you, so you can uh, secure the ends to one another so they don't go anywhere. So you're finishing with number four next, uh, number five next to number six. So corner of the number five is next to the corner of number six. The corner of number six is next to the corner of number three. Number three next to number four. Number four next to number one. Number one next to number two. My advice is to pause the video and do a screenshot of this. Or take a picture on your phone. So you can then replicate where goes what. The simple way of doing it is start in section. So start the first cross on the first three and then do the second crossover on the second three tubes. And then once you have that done, you can already see more or less where each tube goes. Okay. So this is a sign for you to take a picture. And we can then go ahead with the next step. So we are almost done, as you can see. What we are doing now is putting a border, a crochet border at the very end. And that will allow us to connect all the tubes together, remove the stitch markers, and then we can finish it, everything up. So let me get closer. I hope you can see it. You have one of two ways to start your crochet. 
either you grab your stitch, wrap your working yarn around it, pull it through, and then chain one. This is usually how I do it. Or you can start with a slip knot on your crochet go behind the stitch pick up the stitch in this case you already have two loops on your hook wrap around your working yarn pull through the two loops and chain one uh six or seven dozen whatever works with you i just like my way of starting up I don't know if it's the right way, the wrong way, it, but it worked for me. So this is me for stitch. I'm grabbing the yarn again. I'm pulling it through the second stitch. So now I have two loops on my hook. Wrap around the yarn and pull through the two loops. Go through the stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through. I have two loops on my hook. Wrap around the yarn and pull through the two loops. So go through a stitch, wrap the yarn around, pull through, and pull through again. Keep a tight enough tension on your yarn tight enough to be nice and neat but not too tight that, that you're struggling then to um, pull through the yarn through the loops so again you have one loop on your hook, go through the stitch, grab the working yarn, pull it through. Two loops on your hook, grab the working yarn and pull through the two loops. Nothing fancy. Now, if you're really, really struggling with crochet and you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. What you can do instead is just um connect the ends the corners of the the two tubes together but i would advise you to try and make the border just to have a little bit of a finishing look to it so now we are at the point where we are joining together the two tubes so what you're gonna do is just you're left with one loop around your crochet hook just grab the next stitch the first stitch on your new tube pull the yarn across now you have two loops on your hook one coming from the first tube the second coming from the second tube wrap around the yarn and pull through the two loops and that's your connection done and then you keep going and it's like that all the way across Okay, so I'm at the end and the way I finish in I finish off is I'm left with this uh loop on my hook. I grab one last time my working yarn, pull it through, cut the working yarn and pull through the loop. That will create a small knot to secure the project. So this is what we have at the moment, right? Stretch it a little bit, pull it a little bit. We are not finished yet. I mean, by all means, if you want to leave it like this, leave it like this. I personally don't like it because it has a few gaps like this one that I don't particularly like. And obviously, more you adjust, and you will see the gaps from the other 
uh, crisscrossing tubes. So what we're gonna do is just um, do a small mattress stitch, one here. Let me see if I can be in camera. So one here, one here, and one in the middle. Just enough to put this together like this and then we can start stretching out to even out the the knot so first of all i'm gonna get rid of these tails so hide them as usual Now I see there is still a gap, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the yard on the other side, feed it across uh, with my uh, yarn needle and grab a couple of more stitches.
and go with what looks good to you now for me this looks good i i like it like this so what i'm gonna do now is tie up all the loose ends put in knots to secure the the stitches and we are done So you get the dust, right? Just tie up the knots and clean up the loose ends. And we shall see each other back at the, the reveal. Although you already see that in the, in the thumbnail, but uh, yeah. Be right back. I really hope you like this project um, and thank you for staying with me all along. Um, can I just ask you if you have liked the video to click the like button and if you haven't already to subscribe to my channel. I would very much appreciate that. Every little thing that you do within the, the videos, commenting, sharing, subscribing, it really, really helps a ton. And for those of you that have already done that, thank you massively. Thank you. But yeah, keep on watching. Keep coming back. Uh, I'll have new stuff coming out soon. Another uh, nice wee project with the 32 pin. So stay tuned for that. And I'm working, as I mentioned, on a mini series as a back to basics for those that are just joining the circular knitting machine family um so that's it that's all for today thank you again and have a good rest of the day bye